بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو مائی یوٹیوب چینل ان دا لاسٹ ویڈیو وی ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ کیلکولیٹنگ دی این ایم آر اسپیکٹر آف یوزنگ گوزین گوزین زیرو نائن اور وٹ ایور ورین یو ہیو سو ناؤ دا نیکسٹ اسٹیپ از ہاؤ ٹو گیٹ دا کیمیکل شفٹس سو لیٹ می اوپن دا فائل Previously, uh, we saw that you can show the chemical shifts using this uh, NMR tool and uh, you can show the shieldings in view where you can get all the shielding tensors. So these are the shielding tensors and if you uh, reference it with TMS or any reference standard, you can get the chemical shift values. But Uh, I told you that you can reference it against any other standard referencing against the standard TMS calculated at this different level of theory uh, that will not be a good idea or it won't give you the good results. If you want to reference it against anything else like you can reference it using methanol or benzene or any other solvent. So, um, There is a good research article I'll show you here. This is about application of the multi-standard methodology for calculating proton NMR chemical shifts. So uh, in this article, the authors have told about using methanol or benzene as a reference standard. And then they told that you can use different standards in the same calculation. Like you can use benzene for the sp2 carbons and uh, methanol for the sp3 carbons and that would give you good results. So you can give it a read and um, apply it as you like. But I'll show you how to uh, add these shielding tensors and get the chemical shifts while still referencing with the methanol or, or benzene but not TMS. So for that purpose, I have made a, an Excel sheet. You can make your own and uh, I'll probably add this sheet to GitHub and uh, add a link uh, in the video with the video so that you can access this sheet. And uh, if you want, you can make your own or you can extend it. So here I have basically added uh, different. It, it should be atom type instead of carbon type. So mostly there are carbons, that's why we just write down the carbon type. So this is uh, a quaternary carbon at, uh, if I just put it here, you can see that the carbon number one is the carbon, which is the carbonyl carbon. And then carbon number two is this CH2, that is a methylene. And you can see that the carbon type is this one, and I have given it a number. And then we have an OH, which also has a proton. So if we want to calculate the proton chemical shift, uh, I'll just add OH and it's at position three. Now you have to add the shielding tensors for proton over here and for carbon over here. And then you can uh, see that their chemical shift values will appear over here. So I'll just copy this here and leave this space empty uh, because this is a CH2 and it will contain two protons. So I'll, I'll leave two boxes over here. And then I'll show you how, how did I reference it. I'll tell you the formulas. So first of all, I'll just write down the shielding tensors. So for carbon one, it's 56.27. And for carbon 2, it's 153.83. Now I'll show the shielding tensors of proton and write it down. So the first is 27. Sorry, the first is a quaternary carbon. It doesn't have a proton. So for CH2, it's 28.45. And 28.45. So in this case, both of the protons are 
at similar chemical shifts sometimes you would have a ch2 where both the protons would be chemically non equivalent so in those cases you need to add them separately but here we can just do it once because both of them are exactly same and then i'll put oh as 27.46 so now um, this work is done. We'll come back to Excel sheet and see what's more in there. So basically, um, here is the referencing section. So you can add your own. I have added methanol experimental chemical shift for C13 NMR and proton NMR. And then benzene experimental shift for C13 and proton NMR. This would be in a specific solvent. So if you want to see your chemical shift values, um, you can check it uh, in the literature. What solvent are you using and what are its experimental chemical shift values? You can write them down here. And then I have calculated methanol and benzene uh, in, in DMSO. And here are the shielding tensors for methanol. C13 NMR shielding tensor is this one. So this is the calculated one from, from Gaussian. And this is the experimental one from the literature. So I have put these values over here as well. Now you can see that uh, keep one thing in mind that you should calculate your compound and the solvent at the same level of theory. You, you otherwise you won't get that good results because if you compare them at different level of theories uh, th that won't make sense so uh, at the moment i think these solvent signals they are calculated at a much better level of theory than the compound i calculated at just the 3 to 1g basis set but uh, i'm just going to show you and you can do it yourself by calculating them at the same level of theory so here is the C13 shielding tensor and here are the proton shielding tensor and you can see that the sheet is calculating the uh, chemical shift values for both like for NMR we don't have a chemical shift here for C13 it's this one so what it is I'll just show you the formula it's basically um, O9 this one this uh, sorry this one this is the calculating shielding tensor of methanol minus F5, which is the calculated, calculated shielding tensor of the carbon in your compound. So you uh, subtract the shielding tensor of your carbon from the solvent and then you add the experimental chemical shift value of the solvent in that and you will get the chemical shift value of your calculated uh, compound. So here, I'll just delete this one because this is the carbon and these are two protons. So it's showing them as 2.884 BPM. And uh, I'll just copy the formula downwards to see for OH, the chemical shift is 3.83 BPM. So this is the way you can uh, calculate chemical shift values uh, and reference them against any solvent or any standard you want. Or even if you want TMS, you can add the TMS values over here. Uh, you can add the uh, silicon value and then the protons value and you can reference it manually by calculating at the same level of theory uh, instead of using the one that is supplied in the Gauss view because uh, it's it's calculated at a level of theory and your calculation can be different. So in that case, it won't be a good uh, referencing standard. So this is how you can easily calculate chemical shift values from the shielding tensors given by Gauss Gaussian. And uh, in some next video, I'll show you if you have multiple conformers, how can you uh, average them using Boltzmann averaging and then how can you uh, get the uh, Boltzmann average chemical shifts out of that uh, that corresponds to the experimental data very nicely. So at the moment, I'll close this video with this. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Allah Hafiz.